Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we're going to take a look at this beauty. This is the Unity uh, UPO 1204, a four channel, 200 megahertz, two giga sample per second bench oscilloscope. So like I said, it has four analog channels, uh, two giga samples per second with a rise time less than 1.8 nanoseconds which is just really great it has a waveform capture rate of 500,000 waveforms per second and an input impedance of one ohm now I will say I would have liked to have seen a switchable impedance on here where I could switch the impedance to uh, 50 ohms for RF work but that is a very very small thing now one thing I did notice about this that I find somewhat interesting. If I turn the scope off, you can still hear the fan. And the only way to turn the fan off is to come around to the back of the unit. And flick off the soft, the hard power switch. Now on the other equipment, the fan goes off with the soft switch. So that's something I think they should probably take a look at at Unity. Now over here you see we have an external trigger and an auxiliary out. And on the other side we have an Ethernet port and a USB client port. Since this is a four channel scope, you do get four probes with it. These are the probes that come with it. They are the UTP05 200 megahertz probes. Now, 200 megahertz probes on a 200 megahertz scope. I would have liked to have seen three or 400 megahertz, but that's just me. <clears throat> now, we're looking here at the what, seven and a, yeah, seven inch TFT. Non-touchscreen LCD, but don't worry about it not being a touchscreen because there are a whole thing of buttons right here, so it's not a problem. The touchscreen is nice and crisp, and the colors look good. Let me move these up here so we can see all the all the different colors. Pressing each one twice will turn it off now we come over here to this is our channel menu here the the vertical menu and you can see we have one set of controls for each of the channels and you simply need to select which channel you're dealing with at the time but once you select your channel you get the channel menus up here we have coupling bandwidth limit volts per division invert uh, probe, you can, you know, set your probe for whatever you're using. Whoops. And probe type, you can set it as voltage or current. We have a back button down here, which also works as the next button when there are more pages. Up here, this menu button turns off the menu, giving you more screen real estate, which is a very nice, very welcome touch. Now you notice down here we also have a math button that brings in things like a math function which allows us to do you know plus minus multiply divide waveforms it also allows us to do an FFT function but we're not getting into that in this introduction here So we also have over here the reference button, which will take a reference waveform and our digital button, which is not engaged on this model. Next to our vertical controls, we have our horizontal controls. And of course, these are all clicky. There's how you get your dual window. Our horizontal menu, we can change our time base to any of these. We can change windows and we can change the hold off all very nice functions moving over next we have our trigger and under the trigger menu we can select our trigger types and look at this 
edge pulse video slope run window delay timeout duration setup hold uh nth edge pattern rs232 i squared c spy yeah it's got a lot i was unable to find a roll mode on here which is kind of an older you know hold off thing but still we would like to see something like that we are looking currently at a one hertz sine wave and you can see it is it's far too slow for the frequency counter to pick it up so let's take it up we'll go this is a there's 70 70 hertz yeah 70 hertz And you can see now that's enough for the frequency counter to pick up. All right, let's go one kilohertz. And it's doing quite well. It's not having any trouble with this. What I wanted to see here was the display menu. We can go in now and you can change whether you want vector or, or dots, your graphical brightness, all of that kind. But here's what I was looking for, persistence. We can have uh, probably unlimited persistence. Yeah, unlimited. Fantastic. All right, let's keep going up. Uh, let's go 100 kilohertz. And let me change our amplitude. Make it 5 volts peak to peak. There we go. We're looking good. Let's go one megahertz. Oops, wrong button. One second. All right, one megahertz. Looking good. Ten megahertz. One hundred megahertz. Oh, that says forty. I'm like, what the? Oh, yeah, we can only go to forty megahertz on this one. All right, let's take a look at some of the menu features under measure if we turn all parameters on you get a look now of all the different measurements they have including voltage time and other types of measurements any of these can be brought down here to the bottom of the screen let me turn the all measure off here and let's say we wanted to add something down here to the bottom of the screen we say uh, user defined and let's say we wanted to know our AC RMS. Click, boom. Now we've got it down there. So those are the things you can find in your measurement menu. Under the acquire mode or menu, we can find our different acquire normal, peak, high res, and average. Next, we have the storage menu where we can write to and retrieve waveforms from the USB. We have our cursor menu where we can do measurements <clears throat> both in the time base and voltage base measurements. We have our display where we can change all of our the uh, display settings. We have a utility menu where we can do our calibration and all that sorts of things. We have the home menu that takes you back whoops, to the beginning. Now, this is a weird one. Simometer. That's the frequency counter. You can turn it on or off there. It also has this uh, digital voltmeter function, which you can turn on. And now you see it's reading the, uh, the RMS voltage. That's pretty nice. 
Now down here we have our bus menu, which if you're decoding say RS-232 or I squared C or SPY, you'll find those settings there in the bus menu. The generator button doesn't do anything because there's no uh, function generator in here. The navigate button allows us to put uh, little time segment markers on the screen, which is very nice. Default takes you back to the beginning, and then you have a capture button that allows you to capture everything there. So all in all, and this is a fantastic oscilloscope. It, it's honestly more than I use here. Like, I, I can generally get away with a two-channel scope, so having a four-channel scope is just uh, fantastic icing on the cake. So this is just a first look, and we will take a more in-depth look at this scope in the future. All right, I'd like to thank Unity for sending this out free of charge for our consideration. I'd like to thank you, no, you right there, for watching, because I wouldn't do this stuff if you weren't watching. And I'd also like to thank the patrons, because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the patrons who keep the channel alive and going. All right, guys, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.